Hey, how's it going? It is Wednesday, July 1st, and this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. Today we'll get some coronavirus updates, an interesting look into cancel culture, and finding meaning in the Tuesday morning message. So, how you guys doing? It is already Wednesday, right? It's already Wednesday. We're here. It's, it's like we're going to have the great songs tonight. So I hope that you guys are really excited about this. It is an awesome Wednesday. We are starting a brand new month. It's not just July 1st, guys. It's not just July 1st. You guys got to understand something. It is a special day because it is Canada Day. Yes, it is Canada Day, July 1st, here on the Morning Star Drive. I'm just thankful that you guys have joined us here. Looking forward to a great Wednesday, great songs tonight. So let's start it well with this show. Remind everyone, just keep liking, keep commenting. I want to hear from you guys, see how you're doing, get your requests and your stories. And remember, this week's Sunday edition, I interviewed Mayfin Lim from Malaysia. So make sure to catch that interview. And next week, we'll be meeting a member from America, Blessed Family, and he's been head leading in churches for nine years now, and he's still under 40 years old. Great example of Blessed Family, and just dedicated his life to this history. We're going to meet Pastor Nate Claren in Houston, Texas. Looking forward to this interview as he talks about his journey in this history and all the great experiences he's had with the Lord. And once again, for those of you who are interested in lecture training, we'll be starting training today on Patreon. All right. So it's, this is your chance. So if you want to just go ahead and join there. So let's get into the featured artist of the day. And of course, we haven't heard them in a long time. It is the Somni Boys with their new album, Tales of the Longing Heart. And the song we're going to hear today is Into Your Arms. Second song we're going to hear from the Paper Music Associates is going to be PGY. And the song and the single is Dr. Rain. So everyone just sit back, relax as we go into these songs, supporting our members from around the world, our artists that are making just great music.
And that is PGY, and that song is Dr. Rain. I hope you guys enjoyed that song. And, of course, that first song we heard from the Somni Boys in their new album, Tales of a Longing Heart, and that song was Into Your Arms. Go ahead, check them out on YouTube, and they have a bunch of other platforms, even on SoundCloud. So please enjoy as much as you'd like from these am just amazing music from uh, members from around the world. So let's get into today's coronavirus updates. In the world, at the moment, 10.45 million cases with 500 9,000 deaths. And once again, like every day, the mortality rate is going down. It's 4.87%. The U.S. is following suit. 2.7 million cases, 129,000 deaths, which makes it 4.8%. So the gap is widening uh, between the global uh, mortality rate and uh, the U.S. mortality rate. Brazil, 1.37 million cases, 58,000 deaths at 4.26%. India, 573,000 cases, 17,000 deaths at about 3%. And Mexico is at 220,000 cases, 27,000 deaths. And they're kind of remaining still around 12.29, 12.3%. Uh, South Africa, one of the new people, the new countries up here in the top six, and there are 144,000 cases, 2,500 deaths at 1.75%. And finally, the Philippines. Philippines has 36,000 cases, 1,200 deaths at 3.44%. Uh, interesting thing, Sweden, they were way up at 12, 13% a couple months ago. And they were the only country not in lockdown. They have dipped under 8%. They're not 7.85%, which is a really, really good sign. Uh, Belgium, 15.87%. They're holding steady. And yesterday, a lot of a big bump in cases as the U.S. had 45,000 uh, new cases at 2% increase. Brazil had 25,000 cases at 2% increase. India, 18,000 cases, 3%. South Africa, 6,100 cases, 4%, and Mexico had 4,000 cases at 2%. Uh, if you're looking kind of in Southeast Asia, uh, it's kind of Indonesia, Singapore are kind of way at the top when it comes just case-wise. But, you know, death-wise, they're, they're still doing really well. Uh, Indonesia has 55,000 cases, and Singapore has 43, 44,000 cases around there. Uh, but even Singapore, the rate that the cases are going up is like 200. It's, like, it's at basically 0%. Indonesia is at 2%. Malaysia is at 0%. Like, they only added three cases the other day, right? They're only at 8,600 cases. So it was really low. And, of course, Hong Kong added four cases, and they're, they're still at 1,200 cases. So they're, they're relatively super low. Uh, interesting update is the WHO is sending a team into China to investigate the coronavirus and the origins of it. So that's kind of a good sign. We're not sure how much we can trust uh, the WHO doing this because I believe that people, like, the countries are asking for an independent... Uh, independent uh, like scientists to go in to check it out. Uh, but it looks like the w WHO is sending a team in there. And also, uh, just a, kind of a couple of other days, like we talked about Germany yesterday. They uh, just went up 500 cases in the last day, and China went up another 20 cases too. So that's quite, quite interesting. Of course, with China, uh, we are kind of not really uh, trusting what they're telling us about this, right? So it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, but, you know, at least they're putting some cases, new cases coming up there. Uh, today, uh, I want to get into something very, very interesting because uh, I'm not American. Obviously, right? I'm not American. Well, I sound American. And I used to live in America. But there's something, is, is, it's kind of very interesting because it's something called cancel culture. I, I'm sure many of you guys know this. It's really interesting thing that's happening. Uh, mainly, I guess it's starting in America and it's kind of spreading around the world, right? A cancel culture, it's really alarming because... Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because it's affecting my realm. It's affecting my realm in the YouTube, in the YouTube realm. It is. Like, the most famous blogger on YouTube, Jenna Marbles, got canceled, basically. Because, uh, like, something that she said 10 years ago on her channel. 10 years ago. Yeah, 10 years ago on her channel. And she has 20 million subscribers on her channel, which is crazy. Like... Uh, like a million is a lot. Like a million is like a dream that a lot of people on the YouTube channels want to get. But she's at 20 million. She's one of the first pioneers when that came came to um, uh, blogging and such or vlogging, I guess, right? She had really funny things, like kind of just like these funny quirky videos. And uh, they basically dug up even videos that she she even deleted them. Like I guess, you know, she doesn't want them to be on there because it's maybe not sensitive to the time right now. But she deleted them, and the people are calling her out on it. And then she just had this last video that I saw. And it basically, she just said, this is my last video, maybe for now or maybe forever. And then she just turned it off. It's really crazy because it's interesting. Be this cancel culture is like 
things that you might have said like 20 years ago, 30 years ago, things you might have done when you're in high school. Like, I know they did this to Kevin Hart before. They did it to comedians. And, you know, comedians kind of have a special role in society because they have a little bit more freedom to, uh, I would say, have the freedom to joke around about social issues to bring them up, right? And, and, and it's quite funny, and a lot of people support them too. Uh, but it's not only her. It's not only her. Uh, right now, cancel culture is trying to cancel Jesus. As crazy as that sounds, like, they're, they're, well, it's not Jesus. It's actually white Jesus. So it, it's, it's interesting because they want to, like, smash all the stained glass windows that have white Jesus on it, which is really weird, right? They, you're going to go to every church in the world or every church in America and, like, smash all their stained glass windows if it has a white Jesus. And it was quite interesting because I was, I was watching some, like, j like, Jewish people. And Jewish people hate Jesus. Well, not hate Jesus, but they don't, you know, they don't agree that Jesus is the Messiah. But even the Jews are saying this doesn't make any sense because, like, when you look at these Jewish people online, like, they look white. And they're, like, going, look, I'm a Jew, and Jesus looks like me. I, I, I kind of look white. And it's, it's, it's really, really crazy. That, you know, of course, there's cancel culture on Abraham Lincoln, on Ulysses uh, Grant, and, like, a lot of the— And it, it's really weird because they tear down statues and everything else because of something, you know, like, oh, they might have been a slave owner, this, 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 and this. And it's kind of— They take a look at their past, and if there's anything bad in the past, and then they're going to take it down, right? So, it, like, take it from me. Like, I am someone who's just watching this, but from an outside perspective, it's very, very interesting to see how they're doing it. It's very, very interesting. Like this Jenna Marbles has 20 million followers, subscribers. And 10 years ago, the funny videos that might not hold up today, but she even, she even like deleted them. And they use against her to taint her name. And she's someone who's so famous that, like I've never heard of her, but she's so famous that she even has a wax figure at Madame Tussauds Wax Museum. I didn't know. I've never heard of her until until recently, but the only reason I'm interested is because she's a YouTuber just like I am, right? And well, not just like me. She has 20 million more followers than I do, <laughs> right? So it's, it's quite interesting. So I, I was I was very uh, it made it very very interesting too. It's weird how if someone has done anything wrong in their life, then you tear them down. It's, 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 you know, that's a very, very interesting concept for me, like to, to look at it, how extreme it is. And, yeah, you know, I'm not going to talk like I mean, I don't want to talk about race issues because that's this. I, that's something I totally don't want to do. Right. So I don't want to talk about that. But should people be judged for those things like 10 years ago? Yeah. Should it matter? Does it matter? And it, it's really interesting because, uh, like, I'm gonna, I'm just, I'm not talking. This, I'm, uh, this is something I'm not talking about race at all. I'm just talking about um, if someone like their criminal history, like people say, oh, you can't talk about the criminal history. What you know, you have to talk about what they did right now. But then when you look at, like, it's kind of a double standard because then they'll tear down statues about things that they did in their life, or like say Jenna Marbles or these people that are trying to cancel. They do something ten years ago. So it's really interesting because, like. Uh, these like saints and heroes that they have right now, they may not have a clean, a clean history and they'll say, oh, it's okay. And then it's interesting like how you'll take down something else and um, you'll look and say, oh, well, you know, you, you have to look at what they've done in their, in their past. But other people, you don't have to look at it. So it, for me is, you know, it's something I don't want to get too much into. I'm just looking into the logic of it. I'm not looking at anything else but the logic of it, right? So YouTubers and other other YouTubers, other people are getting canceled because of what they did in the past, and it doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't make sense. What doesn't make sense is, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Like that you're gonna do this for things that people did like even 30 years ago. Because I saw that Brett Kavanaugh was it was it Brett Kavanaugh like for going for the Supreme Court. And they're looking at things that he did in high school or, or in university, which was like 30 years ago. And there was like there wasn't even much evidence on it either. That for me it was really really interesting. So uh, personally, I'm gonna be I'm gonna give you my 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 personal opinion on this. I think cancel culture is very ungodly, and I'm just gonna tell you why. Because when it comes to God, if you repent, God doesn't remember your sins, and He doesn't hold it against you in the future, or 10 or 20 years later. And he's not going to bring it up and say, well, look what you did 10, 20 years. Like, I don't, I, I just don't, it, it's a very ungodly thing. Should God remember the things we did in the past if we repent? And the answer is, I don't think so. Does love cover over multi multitude of sins? I do think so, right? Should people get a chance to uh, change? I think so. Should people be given some leeway if they're a teenager? And I think so. 
right? Or else I don't know how many of us would actually survive. If, if, if everything in the past was taken into account, even if they're repented for, right? So I'm not American. I don't understand the full situation. I'm looking at the logic of this cancel culture. It's really weird for me. And I'm looking at it just from a very objective view and a very logical point of view without any emotion. You know, I'm, I'm wondering if Americans can see what people think about America or this cancel culture and a lot of things going on from outside. Because for me, it's living in America and then now living outside of it and just looking at the news and such, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's a completely different perspective. And talking to people uh, about America, people are kind of thinking that Americans are crazy. Like, what the heck is going on? So, you know, I'm not here to talk about which argument is right. My only thing I'm looking into are the actions of the people. Like, I'm not going to talk about the emotional aspect. Is it right or wrong to do this? No. I'm only looking into the actions of the people. In the end, in the end, we know that only the actions remain. And God is someone who also looks at the things from a very, you know, God also looks at things from a very a different perspective. Like in Providence, we're taught to take action and we'll be judged for everything that we've done, right? And from the outside, what I see... From the outside looking in, what I see in America is quite scary. And uh, because it doesn't seem like you can get real information anywhere. I I'm not sure if you Americans tell me if you feel the exact same way, that it's hard to get real information. Like, you don't know if it's fake or real. You just don't. And like when you look at the media, they're, supposed to be, uh, they're not supposed to be biased at all. But when you listen to the media, it's super biased on both sides. So it's kind of like, huh, well, which one? I thought they're not supposed to be biased, but it's like crazy biased. And with this, and I'm talking my personal opinion right now, cancel culture and the way people discuss uh, things in America, it's quite scary to talk to anyone about it, anything there. I'm not talking about members. I'm just talking about Americans in general. So who got canceled? Uh, I thought this was one of the craziest ones when Scarlett Johansson almost got canceled for trying to play a role. So she's an actress to play the role of a transgender man. She had to apologize, which is very weird for me because it's acting. When you act, you're acting those roles. It's not, it, they don't, it doesn't have to be a real person. I'm going to be honest. Back in the past, Sean Penn played a mentally handicapped father. Dustin Hoffman played a man with autism. You know, I have no problems with that because I'm looking at the acting and there's people that I want to see. I don't really care if the person is really that or not. And I, I re this is my opinion is I think people watch movies because of the actors, not because there's a real person playing that role. And for me, I was just like, wow, it's, it's interesting how they'll get canceled for something like that. It's very interesting. And then there's like J.K. Rawlings, the person who wrote the Harry Potter books. And she's very interesting too. And I was just kind of reading into the story. And in the story, she got canceled for liking for, – for liking – uh, uh, a writer named Maya Forstater, Forstater. Uh, and the reason why she got canceled for liking uh, this tweet that this woman Maya wrote is because this woman Maya Forstater is a lesbian, but she agrees that gender is biological. It's not something you feel, right? So she got canceled. And basically she got canceled. This is like the fourth or fifth time. Uh, Dave Chappelle, he got, he got, they were trying to counsel him, but he's just way too big. And because uh, he thought that the kids lied in the Michael Jackson trial, like they're not real. Like they're not really, like Michael Jackson didn't really do that. And is he allowed to believe that way? Absolutely. Especially in a country where there's free speech. Even if he's wrong, he has a right to believe what he wants to believe, right? And he has a right to say it. And it's, it's kind of interesting because I'm just like, Cancel culture seems a little bit uh, against American culture. Yeah. So if I thought, you know, if I really thought to myself, what if God, what if God did cancel culture? Wouldn't that be crazy? We would all die the moment we sinned. Or we would be caught for the sins of the past, even if we repented. We'd be caught for the sins of the past. And who could survive? No one has a chance to grow. No one has a, no one has a chance to grow and mature and apologize for the immature sins of the past. There'd be no forgiveness, no mercy, no justice, no love. And actually, the Messiah would be unnecessary because everyone is doomed because their past is not that good and we're all growing, right? And there's no room for mistakes. So it's, it's quite an interesting thing, and I think that it's a little bit extreme. Like, I can understand that some of it is necessary, as in holding people accountable, making sure people don't cross certain lines, but it doesn't seem like people are really crossing. Like, uh, well, you know, some people are, but a lot of people aren't crossing lines. It's just kind of like they're against what other people believe in. So myself, when I look at uh, how extreme it is, yeah, it's a little bit too extreme. Yeah, because, you know, it doesn't make any sense. 
can, I, I, don't, I don't even believe that cancel culture is godly because God doesn't remember the sins of the past if you repent and such, right? And I do believe people need uh, room to change and people need, to, people need to be given a chance to change. I believe in forgiveness. I believe in mercy. I believe that God loves everyone and wants them to thrive instead of being canceled, right? So uh, it, it's really interesting. But I, I actually want to hear what you guys think about cancel culture. But do any of you guys agree with it? I, I'm, just, I'm just curious because uh, I'm listening to what people are saying like on YouTube and stuff about cancel culture. And it doesn't really help the cause. But I'm not sure. If th does anyone have like um, uh, like just like – support for cancel culture because I, I just haven't heard anything that's very good yet but if there's someone who like says it i'm like i'm like wow yeah that makes sense like i want yeah like i want to hear something that makes sense or do people just generally agree that cancel culture is just wrong altogether so yeah for me is one the reason why i brought this up is only because there's a youtuber that got canceled and they have 20 million followers for videos 10 years ago which uh, yeah it, it, for me it, it kind of blew my mind so uh, I, I find that quite interesting, but I, I – wow, I don't know. I, I have no idea who can hold up to that standard, yeah, like 20, 30 years ago. So either way, um, what, tell me what you guys think because I, I think it's quite interesting. Like, of course, I don't want to get too political and stuff like that. I hope I don't get too political. Uh, but this was something that was interesting for me because there was a YouTuber that was canceled. And I'm like, wow, like even though they have 20 million followers, they got canceled, which is – which is, for me, is like, wow, that is pretty powerful what's happening right now. Either way. Okay, so uh, that brings us into a time where we can uh, kind of relax our hearts and our minds and we can get into a time of praise, right? We want to get into praise. We want to praise the Trinity and we want to sing songs that, uh, that, that the Trinity, uh, that the, we can give glory to the Trinity. In. And the two songs uh, that I chose today, the first one is Whenever, Wherever, and the second song is heard in God's ears.
That is heard in God's ears. I hope you guys enjoyed that time of praise and, of course, that first song 
Uh, another one, another classic. It's whenever and wherever. I hope that our hearts will be in peace, thinking about uh, what the Lord has done for us each and every day. So let's go into uh, the word study. Okay, and the word study is for the Tuesday morning message. Uh, yesterday, I hope you guys also enjoyed the time of uh, learning about uh, the book of Ephesians. On every Tuesday, we're going to look at the scriptures. And Wednesday, we'll look at the Tuesday morning message. And uh, today was a, uh, yesterday was a time where we had great Proverbs on the men, about mentality, wisdom, and revelation. It's really, really good week for people to receive revelations, right? And uh, honestly, I've already received one I'm really, really excited about too. And I just got to pray a little bit more about it. But uh, there's a couple of Proverbs that really stuck out to me. I really like them because uh, just when you think about it a little bit more deeply, you're able to kind of reach in kind of like you're trying to get the nourishment on the deep, deeper side of it, right? Uh, like, the first one was like about everyone needs things, but wisdom is to discern which one you need or which one you need to get, right? So you're, you're picking between two and the wisdom is choosing or discerning the right one. Wisdom is checking and verifying. And right now too, it's kind of like what I was, was talking about when it looks like all the crazy stuff going on in this world right now, right? Like I'm looking in the news constantly for this podcast and I have to be careful because I have... There's so much information out there, and we don't know which one's real and which one's fake. And a lot of times, um, I was listening to a podcast. I, I listen to sports podcasts, too, because, you know, I'm in Malaysia, and I, and I don't get to hear about what's going on in, in, the, in the Western world. And uh, there's one podcaster who had to do an apology because he uh, there, there was this some, something with NASCAR, uh, and uh, he basically said that something was true, and then they realized later the FBI came in and they said it wasn't true. So he had to apologize, like, oh, you know, I, I, I need to wait until all the info comes out before judging. And I think that's what it is. Like, when you look at this right now in the world, so many things are going on, not just America, not just China, Australia, New Zealand, right, South Africa, all over Europe. There's so many things going on right now, and we need to be those uh, that are wise. And the wise are the ones that check, and the wise are the ones that verify what is real and what is fake. And especially for this time right now, it's really, really important. Uh, another proverb was, set the, condition that set the condition that enables you to receive revelations. And God can't just give you revelation without condition. And condition is, you know, it's kind of interesting because it almost sounds like you're paying for something. And the answer is you are. You are paying for something. Like that's that's kind of like the best example of the parable that uh, Sunsim gives is condition is like paying for something. Like prayer. Prayer is work. Pray, you work for something. When you pray, uh, prayer is like work and you're working for something. And it's like, wow, is that, really, is that really godly? And the answer is, look at everything in this world. It has some type of relationship. It does. Like even trees have relationship with oxygen. Or carbon dioxide. We breathe out carbon dioxide, and the relationship to the tree is a tree takes it in, and then take and breathes out oxygen into the atmosphere. There's a there's a direct relationship. It's not like it just takes. It takes and it gives. Relationships are give and take. Is there anything that's free? And the answer is actually there's zero things that are free. Like think about this. If things are free, like Jesus died on a, died for us, right? You gotta think about this. Why would Jesus have to die such a horrendous death on the cross for sins? Because there is the, the sins were so big, he had to die that, like the, the death had to be that much more painful. If there was no cost, then why would he even have to die in the first place? Why would there need to be a sacrifice? All the things that we think about in life is even if you get a free candy from, you know, from a, um, like, you know, when you go to a telecom store, you buy a new phone, they give you a free phone, and then, you know, you have to do a two year contract. The phone is never free. Someone's eating the cost. Someone's eating it, right? Someone has to eat it. There's nothing free in this world. And even if someone's giving you free candy, you know when you go, to, uh, you go on campus and they have clubs day and all the clubs are out there trying to get you to, to join their club and they have candy and chocolate and they say it's free? Well, technically speaking, it's free for us, but they had to pay for it. There's nothing, there's nothing free. Uh, and like, even if you look at the word, is the word free? And technically speaking, it is, and technically it isn't. Why? Because when you receive the word, there is an expectation that you listen to it or you put it into action. Like everything has some type of cost. And, you know, I, I think people would freak out when it's like, oh my gosh, you're paying money. No, no, it's, like, it's not just money. You pay for, you pay with time. And actually that's what money is. Money is paying you for your time. 
you put taking your time out and a certain skill that you have and they'll pay you a certain amount for the time you spend on that with, with that skill level. So you, we got to set conditions that enables us to receive revelation. And the bigger the thing we want is the bigger the condition we need to set. Another problem I really enjoyed was uh, when you do the work of God, you'll get revelation. And that makes sense because for me, I was like, yeah, that makes sense because we want like God wants his work to be successful. So if he wants his work to go well, if he wants the works of God to go be successful, then he has to give revelation to those that are doing the work or else it can't be successful the way that God wants, right? Which, is, which, which makes absolute sense that God wants to be successful with his works. And if that's the case, then he has to give revelation to the people that are doing his works. Another one that's really cool is if you love God, you get revelation. Because that kind of speaks for itself. God wants to give revelation to those that he loves. He really does. So even that itself, we can get revelation, not a problem, because he loves us so much. Uh, there's two more problems that I really want to touch on. Uh, the first one was, uh, the, the, the last, second last one is, your mentality must be complete like God. Then, God. then God can properly give you a revelation or you can receive a revelation properly. And the example uh, that the example was given in the Tuesday message was, if your mentality is strong, then you pay attention. Is, 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 like so that, that's one way you can tell whether your mentality is strong is if you're paying attention uh, really interesting was uh, the heart is the eyes of mentality and the mentality is the eyes of revelation man and it starts with your heart the heart leads to the mentality the mentality leads to revelation and one way to know if you have a strong mentality is, is, is if you pay attention right so we need to polish our thoughts polish our mentality and uh, when when Sunstein gave the example of what like a, a strong mentality is, he says, it's like that moment when you're so awake and alert because something extreme happened, like, like you almost died or something, and your mentality is like at peak, and like that's paying attention. That's strong mentality is like, is like that, an extreme situation when you almost die. is like, wow, like that's, that's intense. That's intensive uh, mentality, and I, I think that's, that's, that's a great way of putting it, right? Uh, the last thing is actually wasn't even a proverb, but it was, it was something that I had to research because I, I wanted to look at what that meant. And um, in this hour that the word was given to us, he said, what you learn today is worth six months of school fees. I'm like, wow, like that is interesting. Like it is so, uh, what's the word? It is so exact. It is exact what he said, six months of school fees. So I was like, well, how much is a school fees? And they said that um, tuition fees in America, let's look at America, they range from $5,000 to $50,000 per year. And that's just tuition. And since most undergraduate degrees last about four years, on average, a student graduating will have $132,000 in debt, right? Because that's including your, you know, your, your dorm and everything else. So think about it. Uh, in four years, a student, if it's debt, you're going to have $132,860 $132, in debt as the average student if, if, you're, if you're getting a loan, which means that in six months, uh, six months of school fees is like $16,607. We just received $16,607 and $16,607 in that hour like that's how valuable it is like i i want to check it out to see like if i were actually able to receive sixteen thousand six hundred seven dollars right now like how 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 valuable would that be to me and i'd be like wow imagine having six like for myself like sixteen thousand dollars right now off the top that is crazy amount of money for me that's a lot of money how much would i value sixteen thousand six hundred seven dollars and if i think about it even more deeply that's how much I should be valuing the word. If, if what I'm receiving is $16,607, man, I just received that much money right now from listening to the word for one hour on a Tuesday. And that's not even once a week. So I, I can't imagine what the Sunday message is going to be worth. Like, because, you know, for me, I'm a business major. So I, I look at things in this way. I'm like, whoa, man, if I had $16,607, that is crazy. Like, that's a lot of money for anyone. That's a lot of money to get that with. You made that in an hour. You made six months of tuitions in an hour. 
And I, I think it's something that we have to kind of build ourselves up to to understand how valuable these words are. So, you know, like those, those, those Proverbs, every discern which one, discerning, discerning which one to get is wisdom. Wisdom is checking and verifying. Set the conditions that enable you to receive revelations. When you do the work of God, you'll get revelations. If you love God, you get revelations. And the last one is your mentality must be complete like God. Then you can properly receive revelation, which means strong mentality, alert and awake, like being in an extreme situation. And what we learn in that hour is worth $16,607, which is crazy, right? So I hope that us too will realize the value of the words. Like even if you look at it in a monetary sense, that's a lot of money and that's valuable. And I hope that all of us here too will be able to think about that also, uh, how valuable these words are we're, we're receiving like three to four times a week. And tonight, it's going to be awesome because what are we going to do? Tonight, we're going to be listening to the, to the, to the songs, right? We're going to be listening to the songs tonight. It's going to be pretty amazing, okay? So, uh, that means we're going to get into uh, the song of choice today. Okay, song of choice is a song from 1987 I chose. And the reason I chose this song is not really because of the song itself, but it's, it's kind of what it meant to me back then. Like this song in 1987, it, it debuted in 1987, and then it went number one for four weeks and was a number one single of the year in 1988. This was back in my elementary school days when I was like really strong in my faith. And, um, you know, I, I was a young kid at that time. But I really like this song because it was called Faith. It was George Michael Faith. And I sang it all the time because, you know, it was a cool, fun song. But for me, when I ever heard the word faith, I was thinking faith in God. And of course, when you listen to the song, uh, it's not really about faith in God, right? But for me, it's just saying the word faith, faith, faith. I gotta have faith, the faith. You know, like for me... Uh, being in that elementary school days, that was this was like such a cool song that was worldly, but it was talking about faith, and I loved it, right? So, uh, you know, ignorance is kind of bliss at some times, but uh, I, I, really wanted, uh, I really wanted to play this song, remind me of the old days when I was in elementary school. This is George Michael. It's a remastered version of the song Faith.
And there it is, George Michael with the song Fate. And I actually, uh, I, in the beginning, I was like, wait a second, what's this song about? And then I realized it's about someone uh, denying a girl, denying themselves from this girl and have faith, right? So I guess it's a little bit better because it's about resisting temptation. Interesting. I don't know. I, I, I never actually thought about the lyrics at all. But when I listened to it, I was like, oh my gosh, what's this talking about? And then I was like, oh, okay. So I got to show you the door because I got to have faith, right? Interesting, interesting, because it's about, you know, there's this, I guess it's a girl and he doesn't want to be with, you know, he's resisting the temptation. I'm going to think about it that way. Okay, so uh, that moves us into um, kind of going into uh, stories, but it's not really a story. It's kind of like this week. Like this week is very interesting because this is the week we're supposed to think about um, like... You know, we're supposed to be thinking about like getting revelations this week. So I'm hoping that everyone is really praying, setting the conditions and trying to receive revelations this week. And for me, I'm, I'm starting to, it's like things are starting to unfold a bit more and more. Uh, and thinking about this, uh, about receiving revelation from God this week, because this is the message, God will give the revelation. And the thing we have to think about, like for myself, is what is the most important thing right now? What is the biggest thing that matters more than anything else that uh, the direction of providence is going right now? And it's actually not ministry. As interesting as that sounds, it's actually not because the biggest thing right now is raising the level, right? Raising the level of everyone, raising leaders, making everyone strong so that, especially when it comes to time of transparency, everyone will be ready for it. And I was really inspired by this because I, last week I got a question from someone and uh, the question was about hope, hope in the future. Like, do you know, is it what, what hope is there in the future, like as an individual? And it was a really interesting question because it really made me think a lot about myself and what my hope for the future is. Because a lot of times we get stuck thinking only about what to do right now, but not thinking about a great hope or what I want to do in the future. What is greater? What is better? What is, what is pulling me and compelling me to do even better right now? And uh, one of the things that just, it, it almost felt like an inspiration from the Holy Spirit because it's something else, there's a question that uh, I was thinking about too. And it's about as myself being in Providence for 22 years, you know, I've gained a lot of experience. I've gained a lot of knowledge and wisdom and, ex you know, just a lot of different things that I got right now. And the interesting thing is, is as someone who's in this history for this long, like double everyone else, more than half my life has been in Providence. The most interesting thing is, is what is my role at this time? And I, I thought to myself, wow, when we reach a certain age or enough experience, right? This, I don't think this really has to do with age, but it is about taking the experience, the knowledge, the wisdom, these things that we've, we've gained and it is passing it on to the next generation. What good is it to keep all these things when uh, basically you can train or raise like 10 people to do the exact same thing? And the thing I look, look, this is one of the reasons why I started lecture training is because lecturing is my strength, like lecturing, education, doing these types of things. Uh, but for myself, I've kind of lost interest in lecturing people. Not not like le like I don't want to lecture people, but my interest has kind of moved over towards passing it on to other people. And that's why lecture training became a big thing in my mind. Like I need to start lecturing people. I got two teams right now, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, if the team is too big, it's very difficult for me to like, like to train them because if it gets too big, there's too many people, too many people to talk to, right? And I'm taking teams of three and four. I want small teams. I really do because small teams, you're able to like get and and and, and uh, help them out bit by bit, step by step. And I find it very interesting because now my heart is kind of turning towards passing on knowledge, passing on in, like uh, the experience, passing on the know-how, passing on the skills more than the actual lecturing itself. And that's one of the reasons why I've been inspired to really just go out and you know, just raise lectures, right? That's one thing I want to do. 
And this is not the only thing I want to do. I have a lot of different things in my heart and my mind that I'm thinking that, wow, I got this experience and I see some of the issues that like some countries or like just province in general is dealing with and we really got to fix it or we really got to do something about it or else we're always going to be in the same position. And it was kind of telling when Sunsi basically said, this is the week you're going to receive revelation. This is the week. You're going to receive what God wants to tell you. And it's not just, you know, you, you, you can't stop at thinking right now, what am I doing? Is you have to start thinking much further ahead. What is your hope in the future? What is it? And you have to think about it. What is your hope in the future? And I think it's a very, very uh, important question that we have to ask ourselves. And if we can ask ourselves and answer that question, and some of the you know some of it might not come out right away, but in the search for it, in the search for that question, we're going to get direction from God of where we should be going what we should be doing, what we should be thinking. And even for myself, you know, I, I spent, you know, I've, been in, I've been in Malaysia or Southeast Asia for about a year now, and I see direction and I'm wondering to myself, uh, God, what do you want from me? And uh, it's interesting how God can change our hearts so quickly. And I hope that you guys too uh, will be able to find direction of what you guys should be doing, right? You know, not just right now, but you'll get a hope from God in, for the future of what you can do. So I, I really hope that you guys, uh, all of us here together in this history, uh, we're not going to just remain where we are and not just do things because it's the next thing that pops up. Right? Don't just head lead because it's the next thing. Right? Don't just become a lecturer because it's the next thing. Right? You have to really think about why you're doing it. You have to think about why it's so important or else... We do things without being inspired. We do things without wanting to do it. And it just never happens in that full way, right? That fullness of like, yes, I want to do this. Or you feel like God is really leading me. Because there is a difference where you don't know what you're going to do, but yet you pray and God gives you the inspiration. God gives you that revelation saying, this is your direction. And even if you just get that, you know that's the right direction. Like, you know exactly that that's what God wants for you, and that's inspiring. So I hope that you guys, too, will really be able to uh, think, pray, set the conditions, love God, and receive the revelations you need uh, at this time. Amen. So uh, thank you so much, guys. It's been a wonderful, wonderful uh, Wednesday. I know that a lot of you were waiting for the future. Well, not the future, basically. It's wait, We're basically, uh, not the future, tonight. Tonight is going to be... Uh, the great songs of this history. So I really hope that all of you guys will prepare yourselves to do some praise, listen to some amazing music, support this history. Uh, and that is going to end it for this Wednesday Morning Star Drive on 117.8. Everyone have a wonderful Wednesday, a wonderful Wednesday, great sermon, not great sermons, great songs, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Because no one else will. You, the people, have the power to make this life.